Hello and welcome to Mind Boggles. I hope you enjoyed uh, the show if you've seen them before. And today we're going to cover the seven ways to direct the mind. We've talked about how to calm the mind and now we're going to talk about how to direct the mind. And during the course of uh, these shows you might find some other things that would be interesting, like the two powers of mind, of attention and value. But today, seven ways to direct the mind. Because sometimes you notice your mind kind of gets off track, you get all jammed up once in a while. Well, there's some very skillful ways to learn how to bring your mind back into focus to make it work for you. Now, some of you, maybe you're a runner, and I know I still run a Hollingsworth Lake once in a while, and I'm old, and I start off and I take off out there. That first mile's tough because the very, after you run about a half a mile, that little voice comes in and says, why are you doing this, right? You need a good answer. Because if you listen to that voice, say, this hurts, I don't want to do this anymore, you'll stop. I don't want to stop. i got to come up with a way to have the mind work for me rather than against me. Does that make some sense? Well, there's some skillful ways to do that. One of the ways is to follow this little seven-step process we'll talk about today. The seven ways to direct the mind. First would be to make yourself comfortable. Second, to relax your jaw and slow your breathing. Number three, for example, while you're watching the show, you might make yourself comfortable, relax your jaw, slow your breathing, and as you're breathing slow, you might just go ahead and continue watching the show. And step four would be to double your relaxation. Imagine how you'd feel if you were twice as relaxed. So you double the intensity of your relaxation. And five is where you put in suggestions to yourself that are useful. Like when I'm running, when that mind says, why are you doing this? I get that thought out and I put in relax and make it. Relax and make it. Relax and make it, right? Put in the thoughts that you want your mind to dwell on. Don't let your mind beat on you, right? One of the greatest causes of suffering, suffering, real suffering, is to allow our mind to have its will and its way with us. Because I do take the position, you have a mind to use, but you are not your mind, you just have one. And it's not important if you believe that or not, but it's a very useful position. If you notice, sometimes your mind does things like wanting you to stop running or wanting you to yell at your ex-wife or do things that are not useful. Learn how to get that part of your mind under control and give it better directions, better suggestions, better useful strategies. So. First way is to make yourself comfortable, right? The second is to relax your jaw. Right? When your jaw is relaxed, the body's relaxed. This comes out of professional sports. When you're running or you're hitting, you're doing something of athletic nature, and your jaw's tense, your body will get tense, and your performance drops. So in the midst of an incredible activity, you need to keep your jaw relaxed, right? So the jaw, you'll notice, if you grind your teeth, especially, when you get upset or angry, the first thing you do is clench your teeth, all right? Well, now relax your jaw and you'll feel your body start to relax more. The jaw is the key to the body. The third is to slow your breathing because the breath controls the mind. Now that's a pretty outrageous idea, but notice you can't be angry and breathe slow at the same time. This week, I challenge you, if you're angry, stay angry, but breathe slow, and I'll bet you cannot stay angry. So the third level is slow your breathing. Now the fourth, deepen your relaxation by imagining being twice as relaxed would be a good way to do it. So as you relax, you, you made yourself comfortable, relax your jaw, slow your breathing, now you go, all right, let me see if I can be twice as relaxed, okay. Then twice again, maybe. Then twice, one more time. So you're really deeply relaxed, not asleep, but just relax. Your mind is just focused on relaxation. Now you can give yourself some ideas that might be more useful. For example, relax and make it. You know? Or it might be uh, in the middle of this whole thing, uh, a, a suggestion like every day in every way I get better and better. Every day in every way I get better and better. Or let's say you're trying to work on um, improving your batting skills. If you know how to hit, for example, while you're deeply relaxed but your mind's in focus, imagine standing at the plate. 
Feel your feet in the dirt. Smell the pine tar in the bat. Feel the bat. Practice. In, this is in your mind. And then see the ball. And watch the ball and take the perfect swing and hit the ball. Bam! Hit line drives. So you practice perfectly while you're deeply relaxed. That mental rehearsal will improve your skills dramatically. There's a saying in, in sports, I have a little background in professional sports, that practice makes perfect. It's not true. It's perfect practice makes perfect. So in this case, while you've made yourself comfortable, relaxed your jaw, slowed your breathing, you've doubled your relaxation a couple times, now your body and mind are wide open to using it skillfully, then you practice perfectly that speech, perfectly that batting swing, perfectly that tennis serve, perfectly whatever you're working on, and you'll find it has a chance to go in deeper and be more useful to you. Okay? The next step, step six, is before you come back to normal waking consciousness, you might tell yourself, the next time I do this, it's going to work even better. The next time I do this, it'll work even better. I'll go deeper, faster, and my mind will be clear. Right? Then seven is just normally coming back. Open your eyes and pay attention to where you are again. But those seven steps will allow you to begin to start to learn how to relax, which is very important. Learn how to start to direct your mind in a more useful way. And then learn how to notice the perfect suggestions you want to give yourself to make your skills better or your uh, better relationship with your, your children or your wife or whatever it is you're working on, getting off all the lousy thoughts and putting in good thoughts, the ones you want to have. So you direct your mind to say, no, 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 not this, but this. When you allow your mind to control you, you're often a victim, a victim of your own upbringing, your own conditioning, your own habits, and you're stuck, seeming like life is against you. Not true. The mind is against you. Right? So as you learn that you can begin to change your thoughts skillfully with some practice, you then can start to break out of patterns. Maybe some of the patterns that we were raised with aren't very useful. Anger, depression, uh, jealousy, things like that that you might have grown up with, you can start to negate, start to put them in the background, start to bring them down, start to bring in other things that are much more useful. Compassion, peace, understanding, patience. Those things are hard. Any fool can be angry. But learning how to control your mind, learning how to take those thoughts that are not useful, put them aside, that's very useful stuff. So, mind bogglers today is basically learning how to make yourself comfortable. Maybe you're watching the show, just make yourself comfortable. Relax your jaw. Begin to slow your breathing. And then imagine how you'd feel if you were twice as relaxed. Then putting in thoughts that you really, really want. Patience, compassion. It might be a hero that you have. You think, boy, I wish I had the patience of so-and-so. I wish I had the forgiveness that such and such demonstrated. Put that into your life. Start to live your life on purpose. Start to design it. Realize you can put in things you want and you can, with skill, start to take out things that cause you trouble. Classic way to do it. And number six step of this process is the next time we do this, it'll work even better, faster and deeper. And then open your eyes, come back with us, and notice how good you feel. As you practice these kind of activities, you might start to then notice when thoughts jump into your mind that you simply don't like. So that doesn't work for me. You start to pay attention when those thoughts jump in automatically, out of habit, and say, hold it, stop, you know, <laughs> pat your cheeks. You don't control me. Get out of my mind. Let me put in a thought that's useful. It's absolutely doable. And it's a mind boggler. So for those thoughts that louse you up, boggle the daylights out of them and start putting in thoughts you like. Hope you enjoy the show. Till next week, take care of yourself and see if you can do something good for somebody this week. See you later.